Welcome to the Sons of Montezuma.com film room. I'm joined today with a grad assistant at State back in 2003. He's been a head coach at the high school level, uh, an OC at the JC level in the Bay Area. He's an alumni and an Aztec for life. So Coach Carrasco, welcome to the Sons of Montezuma.com film room. Good to be on the program. Sons of Montezuma, big fan and go Aztecs. All right, so the first game is over. San Diego State beat New Mexico State 28 to 10, and now we're on to Arizona, a battle in the desert. But we want to look back at some of the game film and kind of take a deeper dive onto some of the good and the bad things that the Aztecs did throughout that game. So let me ask you, what is it going to take for the Aztecs to beat Arizona in the desert this weekend, Jody? Well, looking at both games, um, it's obvious if we looked at the defensive side of the ball first, and San Diego State's got to remember, they've been, this run of success that they've had these last few years uh, have been based on two things, defense and being able to run the ball. And the all offense alignment has a lot to do with your success on offense. And, and so they got to go into Arizona with the exact same mindset. You know, this is a team they can't make mistakes on. Obviously, Arizona is going to be, you know, represented well with some great athletes and some size. You know, they might have struggles with uh, uh, execution on their part, but you can't take nothing for granted. San Diego State's in the same boat as the execution going to be there. A lot of times you just got to play fundamental football and San Diego State has put their hat on that, playing good fundamental defense with high pressure stuff and just being able to control the, the, the line of scrimmage. And so if they can do those two things going into Tucson, you know, then they're going to give themselves a shot because the defense, you know, always just seems to, to arrive at the occasion and defense does travel, you know, and yeah. I expect that to happen here as well. Okay, so what's the first clip that we're going to be taking a look at today? Well, we're going to cover defense first because that's first and foremost, they got to be the guys that do the job and two things they got to make sure that they take care of. That is one, they got to be able to apply pressure without bringing extra guys. If they can apply consistent pressure with four guys, as you can see in this clip here, this is an overfront. They run a 3-3 stack, but the beautiful thing about a 3-3 stack defense, you can line it up in an overfront. And all an overfront means is you see these four guys here, you know, you got a one technique, a three technique, and they just took one of their linebackers and lined them up as a stand-up end. Some defense or some NFL teams call that the elephant guy. He's a stand-up in. He gives them options. But in this case, it's a four-man front. And so, therefore, you're going to have seven guys with eyes on the ball, eyes on the route recognition stuff, and they can just sit in their zones and allow these guys. Now, if you can get pressure on the quarterback to make him and force him to make a quick decision with just four guys because you're applying pressure, then it gives these guys a chance to make a play. The second thing this defense has to do as they're applying pressure is give this young quarterback and this offense as they're trying to find their new identity, give them a short field. And so this play, this clip here, does those two things. They're going to be able to apply pressure with four, get themselves a turnover, and put the offense in a position where they have a short field. That's going to be key in Arizona. They've got to be able to get four or three to four guys to get pressure on that quarterback who's not mobile. He's kind of like this quarterback here from New Mexico state. And, uh, and if they can get pressure on him, they can get some turnovers out there and give Brookshire and that offense a short field to work with where you can get some cheap points on the road. And that's yeah. what you're going to want to do. So what we're going to see here is the DC for San Diego state with four, he ends up doing a stunt. We call it a TE stunt here. And so when you see the film going, you're going to see that stunt right there. You're going to get that defense and attacking inside. He does a great job, a great job of attacking that inside shoulder. And he's going to slide across that guy. And this D tackle, who's really a true defensive end in a 3-3 stack, he is nice and efficient, and he gets pressure on that quarterback right now. You get an early throw, and what you see is you see all these Aztecs, even this DB, eyes are on the ball. So even if it went for a completion, it's a quick tackle is what you get. Yeah. D-line here does a great job because here you got this defensive tackle on this side, recognizing he's not going to get pressure, but he's got eyes on the quarterback and he gets in the passing lane. And with that play, gets the ball deflected, 
And because of the eyes, the zone coverage, because eyes were on the ball instead of just focusing on the man, he's able to see the deflection, get a nice, easy pick, and now you find yourself putting that, your offense at the 14-yard line with the short field. Now, we got a penalty, so it ended up coming back because of the excess celebration, and that's something that is coachable. But this is something that's really key for that defense that has to – they have to bring that mindset and get that kind of execution in Arizona is what you got to do. And, again, this quarterback, he's a lot like the Arizona kid, big, tall kid, big arm, you know, but he ain't going to beat you with his feet. So if you can get some pressure on him, you'll cause some earlier throws. I don't know about you, but it looks like they all ran to the end zone, kind of did like an NFL celebration, like trying to get in front of the camera. And maybe college is going to take on that same thing, hopefully in the future. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's just – and I don't I don't think it was too excessive. We didn't see what happened. or Maybe he uh, did something here, but, you know, whatever. This is a great look of just – you'll see this stand-up in. He's really a linebacker. Stand-up in. You're going to see him attack hard inside, and then he really slides inside hard. And all he wants to get done is get this tackle to just take one step inside. And if this – in this case here, this two technique, if you will, if he can keep it efficient – you know, we're going to be all right. They really had the right blocking pass protection scheme here. Running back kind of didn't do his job here. And that's exactly what happened. Nice and efficient. Here he comes. And all he has to do is feel pressure. You got eyes. You got eyes looking. And then you get a guy that's just going to come in, just getting in the way. And huge play. And we got to see yeah. those come up this Saturday. Huge. And again, it creates that short field for that offense. And Unfortunately, the very next play, Brookshire throws a pick. But if that's a play, don't be surprised. And it's a very nice play. It's a good call by the OC and what he had. And Brookshire is going to learn from that, um, how to read that on a pre-snap better. Um, I know this as a head coach back in high school. We got shut out in one game. And my team looked at me weird because I said, man, guys, you're going to be good. Only because I just saw the little things the quarterback wasn't reading, but I knew iron out these wrinkles here and there um, and you'll start seeing this thing flow. And there's no doubt Brookshire is going to start seeing the same thing. He'll learn from these mistakes. So here's what I'm talking about. This is the very next play. And we call it, it's a 12 personnel, two tight end set, one back. So one being the one running back, two tight ends is where the two comes from. So this is called 12 personnel. I called it Utah in my offense here and all. And so it's a, Heavy formation to the right, right? You got a, I call it a load west is what I call this, which is nothing more than a slot formation with two tight ends stacked. And what you'll notice, New Mexico State, they want a 3-3 three, three stack as well. Here's your three linemen. They got a standing linebacker right here, all right? And these are the other three linebackers. And then they walk up their strong safety. We call it a dime in the 3-3 three, three stack. And this guy's called a nickel. And here's your corner. And there's the free safety. And I'm going to let this thing run. It's a nice play action call. It's a good take a shot play by the OC right after a turnover, right? Right after right. a turnover. Hey, let's take a shot. Let's go for the jugular. So it's a great call by the OC. Come, And what you're going to notice here is good depth. They pick it up. He does a great job, Brookshire, of going ahead and climbing the pocket, getting back into that pocket. Probably takes too many skip steps, but that's okay because all the routes that are taking place is two post routes with the tight end coming across and the replay is really going to show that the unfortunate thing here that kind of a ball is called a t1 ball it doesn't mean in other words you're not really giving it any air you're really trying to just put it right in there so a yeah. quarterback coach might tell him hey just give it a t2 a little bit more touch and you might have something you know but what brookshire is going to see later on you he's going to be begging for this call again here in the new, near future, if not the Arizona game, definitely in the near future because it's a nice little package because it forces the defense in a position where you have to respect that formation. Two tight end set, two tight end set. They're going to bring eight in the box. You got your three here. You got your other four guys right here. And here's the eighth guy. So it's a single high safety look. You're right. And so these guys with this DB, they're showing zone is what they're showing. And so this guy in charge of the flat, this guy in charge of the flat, Brookshire can read these kind of things on pre-snap. Right. Seeing that this is a single high. 
And what you're going to have from the two receivers is you're going to have yourself what we call a bender or a post route. He's going to try to get across the face of the in front of the face of that safety. And then this guy's going to run himself a skinny post. So you got two post routes. And then the tight end is going to run himself what we call an over route into this open space. Now, it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback because you're going to see the tight end all by himself wide open. <laughs> but you know what? All three guys were open. What Brookshire is going to learn as, as he's going through this offense and getting things, he's going to realize if he sees this safety bite on this guy, yeah, and you want to go from one to two, okay? Now, he still could have got the touchdown here over the guy he was trying to do. It was just the wrong type of trajectory on the ball, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Not a strong safety who was in run support. Once he realizes his <laughs> high hat, it's play action, he beelines it back to that area. He's in charge of the deep third there. This DB was in charge of the flat where he's beelining it. So even with the nice ball with the right trajectory, we still got a score there. But you'll notice this is a win right here, which yeah. is the right kind of ball that he threw here. That's the kind of ball you want to throw there. You just right. put it on him. And yeah. now San Diego State is playing the fight song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And that's what you want. You want that band playing all night for you. But once he reads what Brookshire learns, what he's going to learn when he sees that single high look, once he climbs that pocket, if that safety goes with that, because you're always going to have guys as a trailer coming back on that. Instead of trying to be a perfect ball, his eyes immediately, once the safety, that free safety goes with that inside post, then you look at the number two post and you're working one to two immediately because yeah. this kid has no help now because the safety is going with that guy, you know? And once he sees that, we got a winner. And so his eyes immediately should replace and just beeline it to there. And if not, then he ends up hitting the trail there because these linebackers have to honor that play action. They just got to honor that play action. So you're going to see Brookshire as he gets more comfortable with that play, start getting requesting more. Can we go back to that? Because it's a great run formation. Pound the rock with that, get your four to five yards, and then come back to that and just let him play his game, you know. And, and, and it's something that for a young quarterback, easy stuff. OC did a great job of really setting it up. Just so happened he just kind of threw it the wrong. Maybe got a little excited. Let me get it to him right away, you know, and the extra skip, skip that he had. But if he can do simple, as we tell quarterbacks, just do easy. You know what I mean? Don't try to fit something when you don't have to fit it when you got things like this going up. And so that's just a matter of experience and all that. He definitely has the arm for it to put it in there and in there easily, easily. here is a, a play that you see the Aztecs run and all where they're going to get in the shotgun. They're going to run this jet sweep here and you're going to see this guy here. Again, it's a 12 personnel, two tight end set. You hear what you got here. You're in the shotgun and we call this a slide. It's an inside zone run. All right. You're going to see slide where these linemen are in charge of including the tight end. It's D6 versus D6 where the end guy this guy is in charge of that end guy. So you're gonna see two quick plays of BYU controlling the line of scrimmage, winning at the line of scrimmage in a beautiful way to make their job or to make the quarterback's job a whole lot easier. And so big boys there that they got, but you're seeing BYU, look at that black line there, which is the line of scrimmage and they're winning it. Yeah. There ain't one white jersey on that cross. And the beautiful thing about zone scheme, when you're running zone, if a running back can read the numbers of his linemen, okay? Oh, yeah. You're winning. 
No one's tilted. Everybody's squared. You got a double team here. You got a wonderful block right here. Good base. And I guarantee you, if this running back stopped right here, he can read every jersey number, the whole <laughs> number. And that's what you yeah. want. And so as they come in inside zone, they take care of it. And he just stays on. He's still on that block. And just you got yourself a nice run lane. And then he finishes really well. And Arizona, again, they're big. Got some decent speed and all that, but these are things that they you can run the ball on if you take care of if you take care of that line of scrimmage. Now, here they're gonna run the exact same thing. We call it, I call it kick. It's an inside zone. You're gonna get that sweep action again, is what you're gonna get, or a jet here, and you're gonna see this running back. He's gonna attack. So this defensive end guy, he is being left alone because that belongs to this guy. So this end man, they're in an over front here. This end man is responsible, or the tight end is responsible for him. So he's going to slide behind him and kick block him out. So that means that these other five linemen, they're in charge of the next five. So you're going to get this left tackle and left guard. They're going to double team from this three technique to what we would consider the mic backer or, yeah, the mic backer here. Center and the right guard are responsible for these two guys and they're comboing to here. And of course the right tackle has this guy one-on-one. -on -one. This jet sweep action is meant to take this guy over with him. Sometimes he will go, sometimes he won't, but he is not anywhere near, the, we're not gonna even worry about him unless what the O-line will see is if these guys just end up bouncing this thing. In other words, if they see a motion and Arizona ends up just bouncing responsibilities and this guy replaces this guy, this guy replaces this guy, and right. these guys will know that they'll double team to him and these guys will double team to that new guy. Bottom line, you have six blockers, you're taking care of the first six with this guy taking care of the defensive end. The running back's job is you press that inside gap. And so you're going to see that guy. He's going to shield that defensive end. And you're going to have yourself a nice, soft gap here. And again, control the line of scrimmage. And there you go. Help your quarterback out. Give him a nice little, you know, second and short. In football, we call it being ahead of the chains. And this is what being ahead of the chains is, is when you're at second and one, you're at second and two, you're at second and three. Now as an OC, you're loving it. And so for a young quarterback, you got to put him in short fields. You got to put him in positions where you're always consistently ahead of the chains. And sometimes that's going to cater your play calling and whatever else. And when you're on the road, don't worry about trying to be too cute. You worry about just executing basic good stuff, good football. And before you know it, you know, you're in a position where you can win a ball game on the road against a Pac-12 team. I don't care who you are. So I think Arizona and San Diego State, this game is a pick 'em. From the last I checked, it's either a pick 'em or Arizona's favored by one. They're they're minus one. I think the over under is like in the early 40s, 45. But according to what you're seeing and after studying some of the film, I mean, how do you like our chances coming out of there with the victory? I like it only because I'm seeing uh, one thing is again defense travels and offensively. They're prone to make mistakes, but again, with the new offense uh, of coach, I'm sorry, new head coach, you know, sometimes there's a night and day difference between week one to next week, or all of a sudden they're just executing all cylinders. Is their quarterback made mistakes too, but he's going to learn from those mistakes as well. Um, right. Their speed, they're not really fast, but they have some quick players, you know, that in, there's just smaller running backs, smaller receivers, but those guys are dangerous now. I mean, you get them in the open field, they're just quick, they make people miss. Luckily for the Aztecs, we have a fast defense. And so, and that's why I said it's so important because when you have a lot of quick guys that you're facing skill-wise, you wanna have seven to eight guys dropping so that you can keep those skill guys funneled in. And right. when you keep them funneled in, all of a sudden little guys are taking bigger hits because you're forcing them back in the middle and linebackers get to eat and clean up on those little smaller guys. Trust me, as a little guy myself, we don't like big hits over and over and over again. And so all of a sudden you get a little gun shy over things. Um, and so for a quarterback like they have, big arm kid, that, you know, he can beat you or he can hurt you with his legs, but he isn't going to carry the team with his legs. 
you know, and so you want to make sure you get pressure on him. And he does kind of have a little bit of a windup of a release and all. So you can, with eyes on that, as soon as he's cocking that arm back to release that ball, you can make a play. You can make a play on a guy, you know, on the ball. And again, smaller guys don't like big hits. And if you have bigger guy hitting smaller guy after a while, that's how turnovers happen as well. All of a sudden you're hitting a smaller guy and you're drawing that ball loose. But if you're having to get cute or your front four or the three guys, because they run a lot of three, three uh, stack stuff. And that the reason why they do that is because it disguises coverages so well. And you can just do so many things with that. And, uh, and I love it. It's just, it's fun to be creative with. And I'm sure the defensive coordinator from San Diego State just loves it because you can get so creative. But if you're constantly having by force, have to bring pressure because their O-line for Arizona is big. But big sometimes can be a detriment because as we saw on this play, slow lineman, he can't handle the speed of a TE and all of a sudden you're on your quarterback right away. And so San Diego State has that. So that... What I see in Arizona with their size and all that, I think our defense matches up really well with them and we can use our speed um, to get to the quarterback quick. We can use our speed to get to those smaller skill guys and all that. They're dangerous, no doubt. Aztecs got to really be respectful of that. Um, but I won't be surprised if we can get a turnover or two early on and create some momentum. It's just the offense has to be able to do its job to make sure that we finish off that put seven on the board. You know, you can't go on the road and kicking field goals and expect right. to win. Too many funny things in football, pro and college, happen in favor for the home team late in games when the road team who has all the momentum, but they don't use that momentum to put sevens. They're only putting up threes. And before you know it, you're in the fourth quarter and you're up 13 to 10 and you're dominating the game, but you're only up 13 to 10 because you got one touchdown and three field goals and you're just not taking advantage of the opportunities. And we got away with it last week. You know, we got the turnover and the next play, we're throwing a turnover. You can't do that. Good teams can't do that. And so Brookshire has to take it upon himself and that O-line has to take it on himself that when the defense does their job, um, that they are executing in a fashion that's getting consistent touchdowns in the game, you know. Well, if there's one thing the Aztecs have become accustomed to, it's beating Pac-12 teams, whether at home or on the road. So hopefully we'll continue that, that our winning ways against the Pac-12 and beat Arizona in the desert Tucson this Saturday. Coach Carrasco, thank you for your time, man. Let's get those Wildcats. Go Aztecs. Let's do it again.